Okay, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this video is about the Tesla NVIDIA P100. This is the 12 gig version. As you can see, everything is enabled. DirectX, CUDA, OpenCL. The cards come from the factory without DirectX support or being able to play games, etc., etc., so on and so forth. In this video, I have enabled everything on this card using a special driver. And uh, I'm running a benchmark with uh, Heaven Benchmark. And uh, we're going to run it on basic, medium, and extreme. And you might be quite surprised at the results. I was very surprised. And uh, we're going to see now. Please excuse the amateur quality of the video. I'm doing my best. So as you can see now, it's running the basic benchmark. And with this card, obviously, they're passively cooled. They don't come with fans. They're meant to be installed in servers. And the servers have extreme uh, fans in which, which cool the cards. I've had to make a cooler for this card and it uh, works quite well um, cost me about 12 pounds English money to be able to cool this card to be able to run at max settings and keep the temperature below 60 which is pretty good now these P100s were approximately 6,000 US dollars when they were released a few years back and they were one of NVIDIA's flagship products at that time. Highly, highly coveted and sought after. And I managed to pick this one up bidding for about £350. And I'm very happy with it. The power supply comes from uh, two motherboard ATX connections. Uh, they bought the card with a splitter cable which allows you to put in two GPU connections. I have it actually running on the PCI extension uh, cable coming out of the motherboard. So the actual graphics card is outside the computer with a server power supply connected to it with an ex PCI extension cable connected to the motherboard. And uh, it's running on a machine which I've remotely connected to so yeah now what i've noticed is that this card is as powerful as any of the top end cards and we're in 2022 halfway through and this card would take on in my opinion a 3090 easily and as you can see obviously the frames the frame rate won't be the same but it will handle the latest games are ultra settings, as you're going to see quite soon. And if you have a look at the moment on the GPU load, we're only at 50%, and the temperature is only at 40 degrees, which is very, very good. Power consumption only 60 watt draw on the power. It's only using 23% of its maximum uh, factory set power draw, which is crazy. This is the 12 gigabyte version of the P100. They also have a 16 gigabyte version, which I've got on order. I was very, very happy when I managed to get this Tesla to work as a normal graphics card and to use it for deep learning and video editing, so on and so forth. When it comes to editing videos, it's mainly about the amount of VRAM you have. It's not really about the speed. I mean, the more complex things that you do, the more that the applications care about VRAM. Eventually, I'd like to have a 100 gig VRAM in a machine. I'm working on that. Obviously, I'm not a millionaire yet, so we'll see. I mean, look at that, 200 frames per second. It's pretty impressive. 
we're running out at 41 degrees still it's only using 50% of the GPU and we're still at 25% of the power rated power which is fantastic for a car which is this old I would guess, if I were to guess, that this card could handle two games on high. Two separate games. On the same machine. Now, I do have this running off of a PCI Express solid state drive. It's an I.O. drive um, built for big companies to run things at ridiculously fast speeds. I also have a 64 core dual Xeon setup. So there's definitely no bottlenecks, that's for sure. I also have 140 gigabytes of RAM. Are you jealous yet? Okay, now we're going to go on to the next the next run. At this point, I decided to go for extreme. Might as well put it fully to the test. I mean, I was quite apprehensive of what would happen. I, I really didn't know. And uh, you might be quite surprised as well at the result. And here we go. I'm going to move it now so you can see the frames. Now, we're running on extreme. We're getting 70 frames per second straight off the bat. And uh, it's now drawing 100 watts from the board. It's 40% of the maximum power of this GPU. We're getting 110 frames, 140 now. It's using 80% of the GPU. We, yeah, 90, 100%, here we go, 100%, and 2 gig of RAM. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. These cards are definitely well made. Now I understand why they're NVIDIA's flagship card, and they're a bargain. At 350, I got myself a deal of the century. It really is. I haven't even overclocked this. Obviously, it's a Pascal architecture, so I need to find out if the BIOS has been encrypted or not, so on and so forth. I've decided probably I won't go down the route of overclocking this card, as I may just get another one coupled together. As I said before, it's not really about the speed when it comes to editing and deep learning. It's more about the VRAM. You can never have enough RAM. And of course, NVIDIA, they give you the same crap with more RAM and charge you double. Same as what Apple does. So it's, uh, they're very clever. We're getting 80 frames per second here. Uh, obviously there's some jerking because of the screen recording software. But when I'm looking at it, there's no problem with it whatsoever. Uh, what we're getting now, we're getting 100 watts draw. Yeah. Temperatures 48 de degrees, which is still way below a, you know, 3090, for example, without water cooling. We would have already hit 70 or 80. All in all, 
the price that I paid, half the price, no, wait, quarter of the price of a 3090, this is not bad. Yes, the 3090 has 24 gig of RAM, but imagine two of these cards. They would kill a 3090 together. Maybe not in a game, but in deep learning and video editing, definitely. And it'd be half the price, pretty much. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, the jerking is because of the screen recording, so don't judge the, the card or the machine. Uh, it's definitely the screen recording software. And I have it on high as well. The screen recording software quality is on high. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you were bored, fantastic. If you enjoyed it, fantastic. Either way, fantastic. It is what it is. I'm very, very impressed by the performance of this card. Very impressed. If you do get the chance to get a cheap P100, grab it. I will put in the description the links, a link to the special driver which will allow you to use all the options on this card as a normal video card. And uh, also I wish you a, you know, a wonderful time wherever you are. And if you're a pedo, no respects. See you later.